Today, I thought, what makes these old cast iron pans with a flat, smooth bottom so much more desirable than these new ones? The new ones are very expensive, and the old ones are fairly inexpensive. Well, uh, we're going to find out today. We're going to do a, a test, removing as many variables as we can. We're going to take this pan, prep it, one side smooth, one side rough, and we're going to go to the extreme as well and take it one step further and see if that makes another improvement on top of it. So we're going to find out today, are there actually some benefits to a smooth surface? Or is that just something that's folklore? Stick around to find out. Before we begin, I'll give you a quick look at this pan. It's a 10 inch Lagostina pan. It regularly uh, is on sale for around $20 at Canadian Tire. I don't think these pans are particularly great quality, but it is uh, a decent sized pan. It doesn't warp very easily. It has a slight bulge. This is my only real issue with it in the middle, which uh, doesn't really affect it on a pan that's this small, uh, but it does cause some of the oils to pool near the outside. Now, all of the sanding here will be done by hand. We're not gonna be using any machinery whatsoever because we need to make sure we keep a very defined line between the two sides for our test to be done properly. I'm gonna spare you guys most of the boring part. Just explain. I'm gonna go through some grit 60 80, 100, 120, 220. I'm going to go through all of those grits on this side and then we'll come back and then we'll take it to the extreme and we'll see what the difference is going to be. Okay, after all of the sanding steps, right up to 220. We're at this state, very, very smooth. So that's a good finish. I think that's gonna work very well. And now it's time to take it to the extreme. And to do that, first we need to do a little bit of prep work. Another time consuming process. I'm going to take it all the way up to 2000 grit, and that should be as close to a mirror polish on a cast iron as you can possibly get. I have no idea if you can even mirror polish cast iron at all. Uh, so, this is going to take a little while. I'll show you the starting process of doing that with a, a lower grit sandpaper, work my way up all the way to 2000 grit. If anybody has favorite cast iron pans, I'd like to hear about it. Uh, for me, I haven't tried that many different cast iron pans. I have KitchenAid, I have these Lagostina, and I have a couple of really old ones with no brand name whatsoever. Um, I've heard Lodge is a good brand. I think Woods is another good brand. Uh, there's even one called the Stargazer, which is a, a completely polished inside as well. If you have uh, opinions you'd like to share, then put them in the comments below. All right, that's pretty extreme. I don't know if anybody's ever done this before. <laughs> it's so extreme that I'm out of breath. But we're not done. I'm gonna go one step further. 
I really want this to be as close to a mirror finish as I possibly can get. Let me show you that. So here I have a leather strop, handmade. This is the very first video I ever made. If you want to check out that video, check that link up above. So here we're going to apply polishing compound. Well, pretty good. Fairly close to a mirror finish. A few scratches here and there. It is a cast iron pan after all. So I'm not using it as a mirror unless you're desperate. It's time to take the tape off and then we'll get on to coating and then testing. So I'm not going to include the seasoning process in this video for cast iron pans. There's so many good videos out there for that. So I'm going to include a few links in the description below and if you're interested you can go check those out. All right, so we're back after the seasoning process and it took a lot longer than I expected because that really smooth finish did, just didn't want to hold on to any oil. So now into the kitchen, we'll do some testing, compare the ultra smooth extreme versus the smooth versus the rough finishes. And one thing I would say is that there's a bit of an advantage on this side because it's been used for years um, and it's got a chance to build up that coating more so than these do. So I've gone a little extra on these um, on this side here to kind of even a playing field a little bit. So I've gone about six coats uh, of seasoning and um, hopefully that will kind of reproduce the effect of some buildup over time. So if anybody knows why the temperature is so different when I took a reading from each side and I did rotate the pan around, uh, I'd like to know. That's interesting. Maybe this is more insulated. These are less insulated. So the other thing is these did tend to stick a little bit more initially than this uh, pre-season side. At least that's what it looked like. And as far as cleaning goes, this side was way easier to clean. Uh, and this as well was very easy to clean. Well, there is still some remnants of egg left over here. Uh, it's very easy to clean as well with paper towel. So it's an advantage to having a smooth surface from that perspective as well. And normally the paper towel bits would get stuck up on this rough surface and then you'd have all that potential to go into your food. So if you like these kinds of videos and cast iron videos specifically as well, let me know. And also don't forget to... And... 
Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll catch you on the next one.